I always feel that as doctors, we kind of shy away from the administrative roles, right? So we have to step up and we have to know what are the changes happening in the center. Compared to the last year, there's close to 10,000 crore increase, more than that increase in the healthcare budget of 2024. Government has seen that out of pocket expenditure. That's when you go to a hospital, people are spending from their pocket and not using from the insurance schemes. Hello guys, welcome back once again to PW Better YouTube channel. So for a change, this time I'm not going to talk about medicine or pathology or slides and images. We're going to talk a little bit about what has happened in the recent budget and the healthcare allocation regarding the budget of 2024. I always feel that as doctors, we kind of shy away from the administrative roles, right? So we have to step up and we have to know what are the changes happening in the center, in the higher hierarchies, so that we can efficiently deliver the healthcare or the medicine or the last mile services to every person around the country. So if you're first time here, subscribe to the PW Meta Duty channel. I'm Dr. Ranjit, your pathology teacher and faculty here. And let's go and see what's happened. The first positive news, what you've seen is the increase in the allocation of budget. Compared to the last year, there's close to 10,000 crore increase, more than that increase in the healthcare budget of 2024. The last year we had seen um, somewhere around 70, 77,000 crores, and this time is around approximately 90,000 plus or minus, like close to 91,000 crores of allocation has happened. This is definitely good. But still, there is a concern. Most of the healthcare advocates has told that we have to reach up to 2.5% of the GDP should be spent towards healthcare needs and healthcare goals so that we can efficiently improve our healthcare as close to the first world nation. This was actually the NH NRHM guidelines as well, the targets as well, but we have failed to reach it here. But hopefully it's a positive note. We have, we have increased 12.9% of funding from last year to this year. That's definitely a positive note. Welcome move with the government and hopefully we'll slowly inch by inch reach our target goal of 2.5% of GDP spent, right? So that's the first thing. Next, where all these things have gone? Like which are the core areas which have got, got an increased amount of money so that that can be proper, right? First and the foremost thing is, even in the interim budget of 2024-2025, uh, way back in February, March, uh, the, health, uh, the finance minister said that India's vaccination thing, especially towards cervical cancer regimen, is going to become wider. And that's one of the important areas where the funding will be used. Vaccination for the cervical cancer from 9 to 14 years of women for now, girl childs for now, hopefully in future, men also will be included for other urogenital cancers. And it's going to be implemented by the UN thing, and the UN app is, uh, UN protocol and everything is up and running so that India will be one of the foremost countries in the world where it, everything, including vaccination, will be digitized, right? We are the forerunners of digital economy, and we have hopefully become the forerunners of healthcare digital schemes as well, right? So this digital, digitization of the immunization protocol not only stops here, India has also pushed a little bit of more money into the telemedicine and the digital medicine arena as well. Not just that, your Aishman Bharat Pradhanmantri uh, Jan Arugi Yojana, this also, also got close to 500 crores of increased funding. This came from the perspective that the government has seen that out-of-pocket expenditure, that's when you go to a hospital, people are spending from their pocket and not using from the insurance schemes. And the expenditure ranges from 500 rupees in a government hospital to way back to 5,000, 6,000, and even sometimes even more than like 40,000 in few private hospitals. So inclusion of the insurance policies in the healthcare is a one of the important motive and out of pocket expenditure has drastically reduced from close to 80% in 2014 to 42% in 2023. This has to even more better, right? So insurance will become definitely an integral part of all the healthcare needs in future. It has both its good sides and bad sides. Maybe in some times later we'll discuss about that, right? And if you're a healthcare entrepreneur listening to this, insurance is going to be a big deal. So all the things which are allied to healthcare, be it an investigation thing, a lab thing, a radiology setup, or or a more of a corporate setup for hospitals will definitely boom when insurance and everything being accountant becomes more, right? That's one thing to look for if you're a healthcare entrepreneur. And next thing is the consolidated funds of India, the capital amount has been increased close to 1000 crores. So what does this actually mean? So what it means is India is going to kind of give or disperse loans for people who are going to do some infrastructure development, be it pharmaceutical, building your own drug company, building anything innovative, the amount of money India is ready to shell out is going to be increased by 1000 crores from last year. That's a very, very welcome move, which is again to promote the Make in India products. So why should we pay the taxes or import duty for a foreign drug? Let's make it our own. 
we have a very strong medical background for uh, thousands of years together and let's make it on your own and let's create the economy here to push it outside. So the infrastructure development is something which has to be looked for. The drug companies, the new drug patents, the medical devices which are prepared to be in India will have a boost in the coming year for sure. In addition to that, the government has also said that few of the states will have a little bit of more medical colleges. Hopefully that will help the last mile uh, people to get access to easy availability of healthcare, right? And I know that you must be, guys must be saying more amount of doctors, employment, we'll again discuss it sometimes later, right? Now, in addition to that, close to 5,000 crores has been increased to the NRHM Reproductive Child Health Group, implementation of the nat national health policies, everything has got an increase in close to 5,000 crores. This is also a welcome move, like, and most of these funds are directed towards non-communicable diseases. Rather than like in vector-bound control diseases, it's going to be going towards to your non-communicable diseases. And I'm sure uh, Dr. Murugan sir will be uh, giving it all the reason updates required whenever it happens in the uh, government point of view from uh, the uh, perspective of health programs, right? And last but not the least, taxation. I'm not talking, we're going to talk about the tax which is involved in the stock markets or the tax labs which is involved in employments. I'm going to talk about the taxations which has happened in the healthcare sector. One of the most important things, the anti-cancer drugs, not all, these are three more anti-cancer drugs which will have almost zero taxation. They're exempt from taxation. Before they had an import duty of 10% and hopefully more and more drugs will be coming and following this way, which means you will have more than 10% reduction in the anti-cancer drugs money if you're going to get something from outside. Like last year, pembrolizumab was the first thing to start with. Follow that, we have had three more drugs. Not just that, polyethylene, which is important for the orthopedic implants, has got a tax rebate of 0% again, no import duty charges. Not just that, all the alloys has got an, uh, a tax rebate of 0% taxation or the import duty, right? That is again a welcome move, which will help most of the people who are less accessible to re get these implants, get these anti-cancer drugs at a little bit of less price. But again, what I am more focused about is the Make in India product so that it becomes even more cheaper and every person in our country should be able to afford the healthcare, right? Not just that, your custom duties on X-ray machines, uh, your uh, kind of your alloys, many other things, many other flat panels or your uh, PET scan, the nuclear medicine uh, parts have also reduced significantly. That will again help in the infrastructure booming of a country, right? The research products development has also got a little bit of increased funding, but this is not primarily due to healthcare alone. Your biomedical, biotechnological, anything health related will also be involved in that. But yes, healthcare project research funding, though it's a very, very stark move, hopefully this funding should be, become more, more and more significant so that the funding for the infrastructure development and the science, which is also making India, will should grow, right? Hopefully that will happen in, in near future. So what has been neglected? Like I said in the start, 2.5% was the goal and it's not reached there. We have to reach there by default. The second most important thing, as a doctor, I would feel that the government has definitely done its best to reach, take care of medicine to the last consumer, that's a patient. But the government has kind of ignored and has been consistently ignoring forever to look at the healthcare workers. So what have we done for them? In the recent lights of many, 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 many fights, many, many quarrels, many, many hits, abuses, coming back again and again and again, healthcare budget, I feel, should be also allocated for the protection of the healthcare employees, be it doctors, be it nurses, be it lab technician, everything. That's something which you have to do. You, the government has taken care of definitely the patients, definitely the infrastructure, but who is going to run that? That is a very big question mark, right? So hopefully in the coming up budget, that also will be taken care and the laws should become stricter. I'm taking this opportunity to voice out that every individual, every person in our country should feel that healthcare employees are not there just to rip off your money. They are supporting you. They are help, trying to help you. And if something goes wrong, we are not doing it on purpose. So this is for every general audience. Please take healthcare as your responsibility. It's yours. It's us, so protect the hospitals, protect the doctors, protect all the healthcare workers, right? Next, like I said, the funding for research. Research is something which have to increase for sure. It's a collaborative effort of increasing the research funding for every healthcare vertical, but per se, medicine and healthcare should have more PhDs, more original studies done, and you'll have more infrastructure across all the medical colleges. AIMS has got a good funding, 
across the Central Institute. But why to stop at Central Institute? Get it dispersed to all the states. Wherever whoever is interested in doing research, the government should be able to provide them and not only that, also create jobs. Definitely the government has said that they'll be creating good amount of jobs in the coming year and hopefully some of them will be in the healthcare sector as well, right? That's one thing I feel that we are not yet lacking and we should become a little bit more aggressive on that, right? I am a fan of digital economy and digital healthcare, right? So digitization is very, very important because personally I feel that the biggest strength of a country is our volume. If India can digitize everything, not just in the hospitals, in the tier one cities, in the urban healthcare center, in the primary healthcare center, digitize everything, give everyone a card. Hopefully that is the direction towards which our government is going. So when you go and type in the national database of malaria, every person who has suffered from malaria from Kanyakumari to Kashmir should come up in the database. That is enough, that's a gold mine for research as well, right? So hopefully these are the things which should be focused on. And last but not least, like I said, healthcare workers, please go and take care of us because we are going to take all the burden and hopefully we'll be able to give a beautiful healthcare and take care of the health needs of the patients in the near future, right? See you soon, put on your comments on what you think about, what you feel has been neglected by the government and which has to be incorporated in the upcoming budget. See you soon, till then, bye-bye from Dr. Anjit, bye-bye.